Well, welcome to the living room. My name is Kurt, and I'm joined by my lovely wife, Melanie, who's sitting so far away from me. I can't even reach out and hold your hand, because if I was in our living room, I would kind of be sitting back, you know, Roman style. You would be beside me. But we're here today, and we want to welcome our viewers. And uh, Melanie and I are pastors of the Wave Church in Puerto Banus in Spain. And this is the first program, and we really hope you enjoy it and become part of the the family. Yes, yeah, so I just wanted to greet those who are fans of Jeremy and Jane's program and say that it's not uh, for nothing. We are here doing the living room right now and Jeremy and Jane will be back in a few months. They're taking a well-earned break after five years. So we don't want to disappoint you, but we want to invite you to, enjoy, uh, to join us in our living room. This is our living room now. And uh, we want to discuss a few things. We want to involve you. We'd love to have you participate with us, write in emails. I, I can attend in texts, just emails, I think. Yeah, no, SMSs as well. It's a live program. Yes, so, uh, yeah. you know, get in, in involved with the conversation. And uh, we're really pleased that you're, you're with us tonight. Kurt? Yeah, well, I'd just like to start out. You know, the theme really is tonight is change. Is lasting change possible? Can I become new in 2013? It sounds like a New Year's, new year's resolution, yeah, I, Kurt. I, I, I know, <laughs> and I read some. You know, you asked me to, to Google some, yes. and I read some of the top five ones. Well, actually, uh, the first one was healthy eating, healthy lifestyle. Second one was drinking less. Third one was learning something new, which I thought was quite interesting that the third one out of all the top five would be learning something new. Then the fourth one was quitting smoking. And the fifth one is better work life balance. And I think that's, that's some of those are, are issues. And I know for, for you, especially the yeah. fifth one is a big one. Just yeah. balancing family, yeah. balancing, you know, church life, work and, and you know, responsibilities. I, I still look after being married for what? 25 years? Nearly 25 that right? years. Nearly 25 years. <laughs> I, I still haven't got that down. <laughs> Well, we're working yeah, on that. We're working yeah. on that. Well, actually, you know, I was thinking, you know, perhaps the viewers would like to uh, write in and tell us what were your, what are your top three uh, New Year's re resolutions? And we're already on the 11th, and uh, some of you have already gone from the first to the 11th. You're going, oh, I failed already. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we'd love to hear how you're struggling or how you're winning yeah. with do, that. Do you know that there's actually a study done, and according to Richard Wiseman from the University of Bristol, you know, I've been yeah. to Bristol, the airport there, yes. nearly 80 percent of people who set New Year's resolutions fail. And he says, really, while resolutions can be achieved, most people simply set themselves up for failure. Wow. How do you feel like that? Have you I, ever I, completed your news? No, I, I, I still <laughs> have a struggle. I have a Bible, which is like 365 days of reading. You read a huge lot of text, plus there's a lot of explanations. And I have been, over the last few years since I got it, thinking, okay, I'm going to be able to do that. But every year I start at Genesis. <laughs> <laughs> and by the time January is, is finished, it's like I'm really getting behind already. And so then I just say, no, I'm just going to do my normal Bible reading. So I don't know. I mean, a, a lot of people do that with their weight or eating or whatever the case is, their relationships. They're not going to shout at their children anymore. You know, <laughs> these, these, are, these are things that we all struggle with. But I think it's, it's really the Holy Spirit that helps us to just yeah. really have an inner conviction yeah, yeah, as yeah. to how we should change yeah, and what we should yeah. change. You know, I found the most interesting quote you know, by Albert Einstein, and we all know who he is. And he said, the significant problems we face cannot be solved by the same level of thinking that created them. For example, you know, if we want to solve relational problems or financial problems, health problems, spiritual problems, and we apply the same level of thinking you know, that we used in 2012, and it didn't work in 2012, you know. Why is it going to work? Why, yeah, in, in, in fact, yeah, in not, fact there's the definition of insanity. It says, you're insane if you think like this. If you keep doing the same things in the same way and expect different results. But now the challenge is, yeah. how do we change our thinking? How do we change the way that we're doing things? Because generally right. we're, we're locked into our own logic, yeah. which is uh, perhaps the way that we grew up, the way that our, our, you know, our parents uh, taught us. Perhaps it's, it's jumping out of that you know, and, and looking at a different, yeah. a different way. Well, you know, how do you see the world? How do you see your life? I, I think Jesus, well, I know Jesus, but he basically shows us a completely different way to think. 
and view the world and approach life. Yeah, but the only way that we're going to really get that is by reading the scriptures. Yeah, that's and I, I think, I think where we, he says, you know, seek the kingdom of God first. Yeah. Then all of those things you desire, you know, even the health, you know, the prosperity, all of that, that will come. But the kingdom of God, it, the thinking is so different. You know, it's for the last of the first, the first of the last. It's, it's uh, you know, it's a completely different realm of thinking. It's, it's different. No, it's just a very different. Yeah. But I think, you know, I, we were talking about this earlier about, um, before we started, about yeah. friendship. And I think that when, when you have close friends and you are able to open up to, to, to people, mm -hmm then you can discuss these things that are, are more intimate. Yeah. You know, you can s say where you're struggling, whatever the case is. Not every family is, is able to share deeply, you That's know? True. A lot That's of people true. are putting on their masks yeah. and everything's fine. Yeah. And a, lo a lot of times people are, uh, are faking it, yeah. you know? <laughs> and and as, as people of God, we don't want to fake it. We want to be honest with each other. It says we should confess our sins one to another, yeah. that we should be honest with each other. And I think that that, that reality check, I think, really helps. And I th and, and just bouncing things off other people. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, when I share things with you and you have a, a different perspective, yeah. then I start thinking, okay, well, perhaps I'm not looking at it in a very sensible way or yeah. in, in, a, you know, in a divergent yeah. way. You know? you know, I think with Jesus, there's something very, very attractive. He says, you know, behold, I am making everything new. You know, and I want to become new. Yeah. You know, I think, you know, we're going to look at some technology later on in, yeah. in the show. But, you know, I kind of have a love-hate relationship with technology. I mean, if you look at the first, you know, Apple iPhone, <laughs> and you yeah. compare it to the iPhone 5, there's a huge difference. So when we're looking at technology, it's changing at such a rapid pace. And I have to ask myself, you know, have I changed more than my iPhone? <laughs> 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 Do you know, I mean, we have this little tablet, you know, in front of us, you know, and then five years from now, it's completely outdated. Yeah. You know, my daughter doesn't even know what a typewriter is, our daughter. <laughs> I know, I know. You know, it, it's amazing. The change is so rapid, but it shows us that we're kind of stuck in our rut. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I look at the shiny new iPhone 5 and I want it, but, and I see the change, but then I look at my life and it kind of shows me up. But, I'm saying, why can't a, sh a, a phone change more than me but now as a Christian? But it's work. Yeah. There are lots of te you know, technicians and really clever people that are working to make something happen. Yeah. But when it comes to our own lives, we think it, we're just going to slip into it. Look it actually takes work to they change. they invest in changing something. Yes. And how much time are we investing yes. in changing our lives? In fact, you know, where Jesus says that, you know, behold, I am making everything new. It's interesting. He didn't say, I've come, you know, to re rehabilitate you, to improve you, no, to no. rewire you, right. to modify your behavior, but we have to be born again. Yes. He's interested in absolute newness. Yeah. So you could say, you know, behold, I am making you new in 2013. That's great. But yeah. will we allow him? I think it's participating. I think we're participating with, um, with the Holy Spirit. But I also yeah. think that we have to get onto his program where, yeah. he, where he says, this is who we are. You know, we are, yeah. uh, we are citizens of a new kingdom. Yeah. And so when we start seeing ourselves in a different way that we are, we're children of the most high God, I mean, that's incredible. Yeah. You know, when we start to understand who we are and what the kingdom of God is and yeah. how that impacts us. Actually, one of the things that we, we enjoyed uh, watching on a, a snippet of um, a video or whatever was yeah. T.D. Jakes. T.D. Jakes, oh, you know, yes. Kurt, remember he was saying yes, that, you I know, you, you start on one level and then uh, you get to the top of that level and you just think you really arrived and it's absolutely fantastic. I've got my life organized. Yeah. I'm arrived. And I'm then, great at level uh, one. It's like a video game. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. And then the next thing, you get to level two, but you're starting at the beginning of level two and you're going, oh my goodness. And so it's that work to just, and I think that's, that's what happens. That, you know, as we are growing, we're progressing yeah. and there's hardship, you know, iron sharpening iron. Yeah. There's difficulties in life. And as we approach those difficulties and how we approach those difficulties, make us, you know, more mature. <clears throat> so it's interesting when you say, you know, how God, how does God make us new? So we can feel new on level one and hey, <laughs> wow, we've got this game beat, finances are organized, relationships are great, my job, everything's going right. And then suddenly, you know, you go into level two 
and you become a beginner all over yeah, again. You're yeah. scared. You're, <laughs> you feel your life is out of order. It could oh, be, you could be going through a divorce or a bankruptcy or right. an illness, a sickness, and yeah. suddenly you have no experience. You're out of control. But that's where Jesus is going to do something new. Right. In fact, in fact, we were reading something today, and you know, I did a study. I, I looked through a, the whole Bible, and basically, the greatest promises in the Bible were always given during you know, the greatest times of personal and national right. weakness. Like yes. in this promise, God promises to make his people abundant right. and prosperous. Right. You know, and it talks about it in Jeremiah 33. And he says, yes. I'm going to make you so abundant and so prosperous that you're going to tremble. Yes. You know, yes. but suddenly, but suddenly you me. realize <laughs> that yeah. they're in captivity. Yes. They have nothing. Yes. You know, they're on a level two or, or a level eight, right, where right. they have the level one living down pretty well, yes. but suddenly they're on a level eight, a level six. They're in exile, they have nothing, but yet this wonderful promises, promise of God. But he also said, call to me. Yeah, He that's said, right. call to me and, I, and I'll answer you. Yeah. But I think the thing is that when, when we don't need, you know, when we're so self-sufficient and we just carry on our, our lives and we, we're, really, we, we're really not dependent on, on God yeah. and, we, and we think we, we're there on the top of level yeah. one or, yeah. or maybe we've reached level three and we're like sitting there at the top yeah. thinking we've got it all together. It, it doesn't work like you that. Know, somebody said that brick walls are there to show you how hungry you are for change. Because sometimes we want you to, to change, break them. We have to yeah. Break but then them. there's a brick wall. There's a door. It slams shut in our face, and uh, you know, or we get a a million dollar promise from God, million pound promise, yes. and then suddenly a million or a five pound problem comes our way, but you know, and we don't want to pay the price. But you know, Kurt, one of the things with this is that it's really a test of our character. Yeah. Because I remember getting up very early when I was a, a teenager yeah. and playing tennis with my father about yeah. 5, 5.30 in the morning. Yeah. And I remember my father saying to me, Melanie, you have to have the killer instinct if you want to win and achieve what you want to do. Yeah. And I think a lot of us are quite happy to settle. And I think yeah. when we settle for less than God's best, yeah. we're not really living in the promised land. We, it looks like the promised land, but it actually isn't the promised land. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of these experiences that we go through are there to, do, to move us on. And so the change that we want for the new year, 2013, we have to see what the promise is, and then we have to break through some of the things that are actually stopping yeah. us from achieving it, yeah. even if it's ourself. Yeah. I mean, it could be my attitude towards somebody. I mean, my boss or whatever yeah. the case yeah. is. And if I don't break through in that, I will, con I will continue like I continued in 2012. Yeah. And I will never get my breakthrough. Yeah. You know, if I talk to you in a rude manner yeah. and I just don't yeah. respect you, I'm going to yeah. reap that, aren't yeah, I? Yeah, yeah. You, know? you know, something I've noticed about change is often we have no problem in seeing how other people can change. Oh, yes. <laughs> I mean, man, we'll pass our whole day at work and everything. <laughs> our boss can change or yes. the pastor can change. Yes. The president, the prime minister can yes. change. Yes. And we're just sitting here, you know, almost judging and t t telling other people how they have to change. Yes. My husband has to change. My wife yes. has to change. Yes. But the finger, you know, Jesus talked about that. You know, we have yes. to kind of remove the plank yes. or in the Greek, the stake. That's yeah. it in our eyes. And if we do that, we can see clearly. We right. can enjoy life. We can get excited about change in our own lives. So what are we recommending to the viewers? <laughs> <laughs> what are we saying? I mean, if, we, if we're talking about the 80% of people who, uh, you know, have these New Year's re resolutions uh, are failing, so what are we looking at? What is the bottom line? Well, I, I think the bottom line is this. You know, Jesus talks about two areas in life. And if we focus on these two areas, we will set ourselves up for failure. But in these two areas I'm going to talk about right now, this is where the entire system of the world operates. For example, I mean, if you look at those um, New Year's resolutions, okay, the top ones, eat healthy and exercise regularly, drink less, learn something new, quit smoking, better work, life balance. Mm. What is it? The message is, if I get these things under control, if I can organize my life, if I can control my life, then it will bring me happiness and security. Right. 
And then Jesus says, if you believe, if you put your trust in the abundance of possessions, yes, yes. for example, and that becomes your life, having things, defining yourselves by things. It could be having an education, getting a good job, getting the latest iPhone. Uh, and you see people, even yes. magazines that you yes, see, you know, yes. tell you what look you must have, what clothes right, you must right, have. Right. And the whole system of the world is, if you have, you will be happy. Or successful. Or, or, or yeah. successful, yeah. you know. And then he tells that parable of the rich fool. fool, fool. Yes. And the rich fool says, hey, you know, I've had a great harvest or modern day setting. My business has done fantastically well. I have market. earned <laughs> millions on the stock market on paper, you know. Yeah. I have tons of money in the bank. You know, I can finally relax and say to myself, Kurt, you can take it easy, be merry, have a few drinks, you know, start living. Right. And then Jesus says, you fool, tonight your life is going to be taken away from you. Right, right. And, you know, I look at myself and, you know, part of the rich fool is in me. It, I would, yeah, hey, that's, I'm an American. That's the American dream yes, right yes. there. I mean, Jesus is describing the American dream. Well, Take control of your life, organize it, you know, and then you can have a great time I and relax. I was thinking this would be a perfect time to go to one of those clips. Oh. <laughs> because we're talking about, you know, getting control of yeah, our life yeah, and yeah. using gadgets to make things yeah. easier. And so perhaps maybe this would be a good time to go to that clip. Yeah, I think let's go to that clip, you know, and I, and I think that we can use these gadgets. You know, the more gadgets we have to help us, the <laughs> happier we will be. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I definitely think we're going to have a sense of humor. So, so here we go. Here's the first one right here. Now, that's really great. That would make my life a lot easier. You know, a remote that can open a can of beer. Okay. So I don't have to get up and I can enjoy my, my you know, the East Enders. Oh, no, those I love. <laughs> there there is, a, uh, is a beautiful, beautiful way of cleaning your floor. Yeah, we have a wooden <laughs> floor and everything, you know. Hey, okay, yeah. that's good, that's good. And then the next one, oh, I couldn't be oh, bothered twirling fork. my spaghetti. This is a spaghetti fork. Oh, my goodness. You know, that's a lot of work just to twirl <laughs> that spaghetti. You can save so much time. And what is that? Oh, that's a, like a, an ice snowball maker. Really? You know, why get your hands, you know, you go out into the countryside, why get them cold when okay. you can just take that out and make All snowballs right, and throw good. them at somebody? Sorry, we don't have snow here in yeah. Spain, but uh, for those <laughs> we of do. you who are chilling Come in the UK. Place. Now, this is ah. always keep your ice cream moist. <laughs> You know, don't let it drip all over your new clothes and ruin your sense of fashion and everything. But it always keeps it cool and always keeps it moist. So you have a per oh. oh, easy way to pour your tea. I mean, you yeah. cannot actually use too many muscles. You have to have this. <laughs> yeah, that's great. You know, conserve your muscles. You know, oh, ah. why even bother stirring your coffee? Instant stirrer. Look Instant stirrer Fantastic. keeps it warm, mix it up. The foam's on the top. And this, and this game, spinning the bottle. Why spinning, spin the bottle when you can do it electronically? <laughs> Nobody can cheat. It's there for you. You'll find the love of your life. Oh. You know, why even bother, you know, taking out your phone when you can just put up your leg like That's that? That's pretty good. That's yeah, pretty that good. is good, man. Maybe I'll flat. get one of those, you know? Oh, oh. the toilet. How would you like to sit on that, Melanie? I don't think I'd like anybody <coughs> touching me or any robotic help. Thanks very much. Yeah, rubber bands. I'm not sure what that is, but uh, there's all your rubber bands. You'll never lose them. It's a ball. It's, it's a, a ball, ball, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. OK, that's all pretty right. utilitarian. Um, I love this, this is you know. Mine. What do you mean you love it? I'm the cook you in burn the house. food. You're burning the food a lot food. these so days. This you know? is a stirrer. This is just to make life easy. So for you can watch TV and just have it stir for you, you know? Oh, what's that? Pre painted Easter eggs. Why bother? <laughs> Your children can be on their, you know. <laughs> now, this, this is an American thing. This is how to make s'mores, which is like. No, no, this is not s'mores. This is a 10 second snack. Is it? You, why, why even waste 10 minutes eating when you can just drink it in 10 seconds? Okay, That's what it's all, right, all about. It right. has all the protein, everything in it, oh, really? you know? Okay. And these are pre-grilled potatoes. Pre -grilled potatoes. So course, you get that authentic course. Texas barbecue <laughs> flavor. <laughs> no, but this is good. And pe why peel bananas? You could cut yourself. It's dangerous. You know, this, you get this, I don't boom, the bananas keep peeled. All these things. I don't even have a big enough And I do colors. like this. This is true. Three in one, oh, body okay. wash, everything. Well, That's what's good. The third thing? That helps me. Hair and face. Hair, and body. body, shower, gel, conditioner, okay. the whole works okay. in there. The more Fantastic. the better. I can okay. relate to that. Well, it's for men. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't think that would help me, like you that. know. Toasted, toasted bread. bread, wonderful. Why put it in a toaster? Why, you know, we have to be ecologically sensitive as well, you know? Why waste <laughs> electricity when you can just buy that lovely toast right there? 
And uh, this book. is great. This the is book. wonderful. This, the, I think now, if you have a disability like my mother had, this would be great. Yes. But otherwise, if you can get a little exercise. In America, okay. we call those seats lazy boys. Yes. You know? And we're back well. We have already the uh, cooked eggs, already cooked eggs. Fantastic. And, and of course, dispensing the toilet paper. why this, you can set it on the preference you have for I'm the amount of toilet paper. I'm going to tell you, if you paper. have cats, you definitely, oh dear. Oh, as an American, the brownie cutter. <laughs> all right, I love that, you know. <laughs> no problem, who gets the bigger piece? It's, it's, like all, it's all it's even, like an ice you know? thing, doesn't it? Yeah, let's go. And what is that? Those are electronic scissors. Oh, great. You know, right. so you don't have to I exert. And <laughs> all of these are designed to make our lives um, easier. I just, it's, it's amazing. I mean, and pe actually, because of the advertising television, people buy it, yeah. you know? <laughs> no. I, I tend to th like doing things by hand. I really do. I, I don't like, it's too complex having yeah. too many machines. Yeah. But you know, we, we were in a restaurant. What was that story you were telling us when those kids came in? Oh, order? yes. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, think, I think one of the things that we're trying to say here is that we, yeah. we do want to do things God's way. But we went into this restaurant. It was a fantastic Italian uh, restaurant here in the Costa del Sol. Mm -hmm. Walked in and uh, I saw this whole family, six, I think four kids and the parents. Yeah. And every single one of the kids was on a device. And I just thought to pay for a meal and then not to have that time to interact. Yeah. And I think it's actually been uh, on the news and, and the, you yeah. know, they I, are I, noticing that yeah, this I, is I really a problem. The first thing a kid asks a restaurant owner or a waitress is not, hi, how are you? What's the Wi-Fi code? Yeah. Then they get out their little phones <laughs> and they go on that, you know. But you know, Kurt, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm sensing is that pe this is a slow seduction. People don't realize that they're actually losing the old family values, that they're actually sitting around a table having conversation. But this is actually another program as well. Yeah. <laughs> we could go right into that. <laughs> okay, okay. All yeah, right. Yeah, I, I could say it. I could like that. And we have another clip that we'd like to show you oh, yes, right now, great. you know, Fantastic. that I haven't seen, so let, I'm looking let, forward it, to it, it, you know. Oh, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> this is a new way of asking your dog. This is uh, how lazy people <laughs> walk their dogs. <laughs> Should I say smart people walk their dogs? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, okay, and then we have power, power laces things. right here. Why bother bending down and tying your shoes, you know? But th this is quite clever. It looks, it looks very... A lot of people in my country can't even see their shoes. It looks no very either, modern, so. though. Look at yeah. this. It looks very high-tech. Yeah. Like it's going to take <laughs> off any minute. <laughs> yeah, and of course the spaghetti fork. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, well. Look at that. I mean, you could not live without a spaghetti fork. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, will these things change our lives? You well, I, I certainly mm. wouldn't have, you know, gone and done my resolutions. I'm going to get a spaghetti fork <laughs> for my New Year's resolution. I will never yeah. have to twirl my spaghetti again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> by hand. Yeah. No. But, no. but really, I think the overall message is, you know, if I can better control or organize my life, you know, then I will be happier. Yeah. I will have more peace, more joy, more security. I will have more time to do the things that I enjoy. But um, it's a bit of a lie. But isn't that like the rich fool? Yeah. He said, look, I have my life organized now. I can sit back, I can relax, I can eat, and now I can start enjoying Life. And what did Jesus say? Isn't this, isn't this the one he said, this very day, you fool, this very day, That's right, yeah. your, your life, life will, be, will required be required of, of you. you. Then everything you've earned, it'll just go it to just somebody stays. else. Yes, yes. Wife will remarry somebody and money goes to that person. Yes. It's, it's a reality, you know. Well, I think, it's, I, I think when, when we're looking at our lives, we need to say, well, what, what really is meaningful? What is a, a true priority? Yeah. But do you find, I mean, maybe, you know, as a viewer as well, you find that you can't, rest. You can't be happy unless you have everything controlled. Yes. And if you're a controlling person, you'll never enjoy your life because yes. it'll never be in control. You might be able to control on level one, but when, what happens when suddenly there's a level two no, but also if in your life? If you're, if you're a jealous person or you're covetous, you're always looking at the next person to see what they have. Yeah. And then you're yeah. never happy with what you have. Yeah. You yeah. know, so, so there's, there's all these different levels of discontent. Yeah. And so, what does it say? Guardedness with con great contentment is, is great, great gain. gain. Yeah. So, 
So I, I, I think what the scripture speaks is, is the kind of thing that we need to be starting to think and meditate Which on. Which is a great scripture. You know, it yes. says godliness with contentment, with great happiness. Yes. It's profitable. It, it's great gain. It, it's attractive yes. to God. Yes. You know? It doesn't lack. It's it doesn't very anti-religious as well. It's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I met a guy who, Woody Wirt was his name, and he was in his 90s, I think 96 years old. Yeah. And my boss and I went over to his house, and he was on the Billy Graham team. He was one of the founding members. And he said, and he served us a root beer float for those in England who don't know what that is. That's root beer with ice cream. And yeah. I love them. And uh, he said, you know, my wife and I, we're, we're almost 100 years of age. And he said, our mission in life is to bring joy in the American churches. Wow. And he said, you know, we've been to thousands of American churches and we have not even found hardly any joy at all. Right. You know, and then here the Apostle Paul is saying, you know, I'm working for your joy. Yes. Or Jesus is saying, I pray that they might understand the full measure of my joy. And what would you pay for 100% joy? What would you give right now if you, if God was like a genie and he came down and says, Melanie, I'm going to give you complete 100% wow. joy as you've never known it, that drugs can't even imitate it. Wow. And I'm going to give it to you. What would you pay for that? Well, you, you couldn't. You know, yeah. that you would be insanely, incredibly happy yes. at all times. Yes, yes. You know, but yet he promises us that. Yet Peter talks about an inexpressible joy. And then God, you know, Jesus says, what good is it, you know, if you gain the whole world, mm. but you lose your soul? Yes. And that's where the joy is. It's directed at the soul. Yes. And sometimes the, these mechanisms, they've done a lot of studies, you know, and you can see this. And perhaps you have children and grandchildren out there. And sometimes the more they're on their computer, the more, I don't know, uncomfortable, the more joyless they become. But you can go down on the beach and enjoy nature yes. and you have a glow on you. Yeah. It's like, it's, oh, Melanie, wow, you look so beautiful today. Have you been watching EastEnders? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you look so beautiful and so happy. Have you been on your computer yeah, yeah, today? Yeah. It's, uh, you know. Are we going to check the, whether there's any um, emails we, from we, our... You know, we, we will right now. and Because um, before we move on, otherwise then they're going to get frustrated with us because yeah, there'll be not something that's, else to, to write in about. We are live to remind everybody. And, uh, you know, you're partic we're all participating in this, so... Here we are. Yes, Hi, Kurt and Melanie. Okay, and this is from, from Alan. And it says, lovely to see you both with your shiny new show. <laughs> it, it does look pretty shiny. Well, you actually, know? they've done such a good job with the backdrop. I mean, it's really, yeah, really I, wonderful. Yeah, we can't take credit for no, this. No, it's really, we but, just come uh, Thank you very here much. Here are my New Year's resolutions. And this is beautiful. Who's and and thank you. This is say? from Alan. To okay. live in the freedom Jesus has purchased for me. Wonderful, wonderful. To trust in his promises and depend only on him. To play my guitar more. Aww. Hey, that's my religion. Well, I already played enough, <laughs> don't I, you know? To be less, less reserved. Yes. Okay, I can relate to that. Yes. To eat more fruit and veg and less junk food and bread and butter. Ellen, I'm, I'm with you there. To worry less and go out more. Lovely. Maybe take more risk. To more things, to share Jesus with everyone, everywhere I go, using words when I have to, you know? And then he quotes Ephesians 3.17, Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you, you know, Alan. That's Alan, wonderful. You know? Good. And we pray that you are able to stick to that and move ahead this year with that. It's wonderful. Yeah. Good. Oh, this is a great one. I can, I can read these things all night. You know, this is from Sant, uh, Santinder. It says, good evening to you both. Just an email to say hello and welcome. You know, thank you, the, thank the, the, you. I was just talking to Luke today, yes. and you can be talking to millions of people, yes. but yet we feel so lonely here. It's just <laughs> you and I, and I can't even see anybody else, you know, so it's great that we have these coming in, yes. you know. My name is Santander, and I'm a regular viewer of TGFF and look forward to now to watching yourselves. A brief testimony. I was an alcoholic for many years, and since coming to faith a couple of years ago, I have stopped drinking completely wow, and I'm currently wonderful. in the middle of a law degree. Wow, so it's not just wonderful. stopping, yes, you it's know, building but it's something going forward yes. and, you know, thank well well be done. to God. Praise I God. hope to go on to do social work and youth mentoring to stop people falling into the trap I did. 
I must say the ladies on the 9 p.m. slot are getting more and more attractive. Okay, that's great that you notice. However, <laughs> I will reserve judgment on the males. Only joking. Okay, <laughs> great to see you both and wish you every success at your new job. Well, that's really you know, kind. Thank you that, so that much. That is. That's Thank absolutely you. Um, wonderful, you know. And all the best to you. Okay. And it says, and this is from uh, Vicky. Let's see, Mark. Let's see, it says, hello and welcome. God bless you both. My name is David, okay? And I'm sure you will do a good job, just as Jeremy and Jane, Mark and Vicky. God bless. Oh, thank and you. And we're a family. We're not like competing or anything. We're just being yeah. ourselves, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, you know, we'll get back to the emails. But if you want to set yourself up for failure, you know, define yourselves by possessions. Try to control your life more. Try to get everything in order. Try to organize. And if you just trust in that, you know, then you're not going to get that peace. You're not going to get that happiness. You're not going to see that change. No. You know, no. you're just not going to see it. One of the things, we're going to show another clip just now, but uh, one of the things, geez, one of the, Jesus fought, well, spent most of his life on earth fighting against religion. Right, right. Because we think that we can, that religion or philosophy or a system of belief, just look on the bookstore, for example. You go into the bookstore and you look under motivational speaking and you read the promises that yes. these books make. If you buy this book, if you come to this conference, if you read this book, and if you do this, it will dramatically change your life. Yes. You know, and they make these incredible promises, you know, that you can experience this change. And just before we show this clip, you know, I'm reminded I read a story about Samuel Tuke, who was a, a 19th century religious reformer. And what he did is he went into insane asylums and he would choose his A-team, a group of people. And you could almost imagine Mr. Bean doing this, you know? <laughs> so, okay, I go into, he goes into an insane asylum and he says, well, I want you, you and you and you and you and you. Okay, this is the 19th century. This is where people who had mental problems yeah. were beat, put in chains, in, dungeon, in dungeons. And he thought he was, he was a genius. He went in there. He's going to change people. But so he this chose. Is a, this is an interesting yeah. experiment. Yeah. Because they did, he was successful as far as making them appear yes, as yes. if they were sane and yeah. as if they were regular members yeah. of society. No, but what he did is he would take them and he would train them how to behave at church. <laughs> and how to have tea in the proper way. <laughs> you know, I'm an American, you know. Pinky, you know? Yeah, I'm an American, so I kind of had the stereotype when I was like eight years old, you know, a British person had a hat on and, you know, and, and then they would always drink like this. So I'd pretend that I was British, you know, and kind of drink like this. Then I went to Britain, <laughs> was actually no, 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 the, no. The, the UK, and it was completely different. Yes. But, um, you know, he trained them in yes. kind of the stereotypical way that a good member of church yes. should behave. Yes. So they did it perfectly. They dressed the part. They were neat. They were clean. They drank their tea perfectly. They listened to people. They did everything right. So they passed the test, really. And they the passed external, the test. They passed the, exactly. the external test. So the, and exter how many yeah. of us? Yeah. How many of us are doing the yeah. external test and passing it perfectly? But yeah. when God's looking at our, and when yeah. we're looking at our own hearts, yeah. and God's looking at our own hearts, yeah. are we really, truly being honest? Yeah. So externally they were different, yes. they changed, but yes. internally nothing happened. Yes. And you know the advertising industry, oh. what, I mean, externals? <laughs> no, it's, it, it is, uh, I think the thing, the, the thing that we don't realize is it's so subtle how it gets in. You see it with the teenagers, how you've got to wear this and you must do this and then you're cool or whatever the case is. But the clip that we're going into actually is, is, is quite dramatic in that it's telling you, telling us, yeah. Uh, and challenging us to be true to Jesus, not true to a religion or true yeah. to a form, but true to the true gospel message. And I think that's when we're talking about this program about is yeah. change possible? Is yeah. are we yes. able to change uh, and, and keep that change, yeah. sustain that change? Yeah. I think this clip is a very interesting thing because it's a challenge to be real, to yeah. be the raw Christian thing that, yeah. that, that Jesus actually died for us to be. Yeah. So I don't know. And, and just a bit of a background, you know, it's a controversial video, which I like showing, you know, <laughs> I, I love controversial things. 
but it's but called. But listen to the whole message. Yeah. Don't get offended at the beginning. Listen yeah. to the whole yeah. message because you'll see his heart for the bride of yeah. Christ. And, and the title is "Why I Hate Religion But Love Jesus," and it was done by. It's kind of a rap poem. Yes. And it was done by a young man called Jefferson Bethka. And it was uploaded, I think, last January, and already more than six million people wow. have have viewed it. Wow! And uh, really, you know, this is about a young Christian man who spent his whole life, in his own words, building this facade of neatness, just like the the mental yes, people, yes, you yes. know, acting like a church kid, you know, yet getting doped up and viewing pornography. And he also accuses many Christians of also putting on a fake look. Yes. Look, I've even put on a fake look sometimes, you know? Okay. And he just says, the problem with religion, it never gets to the core, okay? Well, let, it's let, just let them judge. behavior modification. Let's put it on. And we're playing it. <laughs> <laughs> What if I told you Jesus came to abolish religion? What if I told you voting Republican really wasn't his mission? What if I told you Republican doesn't automatically mean Christian, and just because you call some people blind doesn't automatically give you vision? I mean, if religion is so great, why has it started so many wars? Why does it build huge churches but fails to feed the poor? Tell single moms God doesn't love them if they've ever had a divorce, but in the Old Testament, God actually calls religious people whores. Religion might preach grace, but another thing they practice, tend to ridicule God's people, they did it to John the Baptist. They can't fix their problems, and so they just mask it, not realizing religion's like spraying perfume on a casket. See, the problem with religion is it never gets to the core. It's just behavior modification, like a long list of chores. Like, let's dress up the outside, make it look nice and neat. But it's funny, that's what they used to do to mummies while the corpse rots underneath. Now I ain't judging, I'm just saying, quit putting on a fake look. Because there's a problem if people only know that you're a Christian by your Facebook. I mean, in every other aspect of life, you know that logic's unworthy. It's like saying you play for the Lakers just because you bought a jersey. See, this was me too, but no one seemed to be on to me. Acting like a church kid while addicted to pornography. See, on Sunday I'd go to church, but Saturday getting faded acting if I was simply created to just have sex and get wasted. See, I spent my whole life building this facade of neatness, but now that I know Jesus, I boast in my weakness. Because if grace is water, then the church should be an ocean. It's not a museum for good people, it's a hospital for the broken, which means I don't have to hide my failure, I don't have to hide my sin. Because it doesn't depend on me, it depends on Him. See, because when I was God's enemy, and certainly not a fan, He looked down and said, I want that man which is why Jesus hated religion and for it he called them fools. Don't you see so much better than just following some rules? Now let me clarify. I love the church, I love the Bible, and yes, I believe in sin. But if Jesus came to your church, would they actually let him in? See, remember he was called a glutton and a drunkard by religious men, but the Son of God never supports self-righteousness, not now, not then. Now back to the point, one thing is vital to mention how Jesus and religion are on opposite spectrums. See, one's the work of God, but one's a man-made invention. See, one is the cure, but the other's the infection. See, because religion says do, Jesus says done. Religion says slave, Jesus says son. Religion puts you in bondage, while Jesus sets you free. Religion makes you blind, but Jesus makes you see. And that's why religion and Jesus are two different clans. Religion is man searching for God. Christianity is God searching for man, which is why salvation is freely mine and forgiveness is my own. Not based on my merits, but Jesus' obedience alone. Because he took the crown of thorns and the blood dripped down his face. He took what we all deserve. I guess that's why you call it grace. And while being murdered, he yelled, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Because when he was dangling on that cross, he was thinking of you and he absorbed all your sin and he buried it in the tomb, which is why I'm kneeling at the cross saying, come on, there's room. So for religion, no, I hate it. In fact, I literally resent it because when Jesus said, it is finished, I believe he meant it. Wow, 
Wow, that is incredibly impactive, Kurt. Wow. Uh, you know, and I, I've, I've, heard, I've heard that before, yeah. but I just think of the way that he communicates that with so much passion, and it's, he has really sorted this out in his mind and his heart, the difference between religion and, and true belief, and the fact mm -hmm. that he did fake it. And we were yeah. talking about this before, about living up to an image and, you know, how to be authentic, and, and we're talking about change. We're talking about having a complete change for the 2013, which means that we are going to have to change the way we think, and I think this is a phenomenal challenge you know? It's interesting because in the eyes of other people, yes. he did change. Yes. He knew how to fake it. He knew how to dress up. He knew how to speak the Christianese. Yes. But on the inside, he was actually worse off than ever before. Right. So this, this really leads us to the question about the deep things. See, when we look at life and we say, okay, what really, really matters? And when you know, when you've reached half yeah. a century like us, yeah, you start century, saying, yeah. okay, the deep things are the things that truly matter. And actually, while we're talking about this, why don't you write in? Because uh, we, we would really yeah. like to discuss this I, with you. But I do, I do want to just yeah. finish what I'm saying. We're looking at the, you know, the authentic life. We're looking at true change, that lasting change. Yeah. And that, that's, th those things are so valuable. Those are more valuable than any gold or silver. This is about having genuine relationships, having a genuine relationship with yourself. Because yeah. when we can be honest with ourselves and say who we truly are and even laugh yeah. and say, God, you, you, you're the, one who, the only one who's going to be able to change yeah. me. And, and actually have fun with it. And, and, and okay, it's painful. Change is sometimes so painful. But if we're prepared to sacrifice that, I mean, Jesus died yeah. on the cross that we could be made new. He yeah. died on the cross so that we could actually become more and more like him. He says he's, he's, he's glorifying us, you know, in his image. He's changing us from glory to glory. So, so really the question for ourselves and for the viewers is, um, what's the deep thing in your life that you have to change? Not the peripheral, it's not like, I'm going to quit smoking, I'm going to quit drinking, but there's something that's causing you the drink and the smoke in the first place. Yes. You know? A place of discontent. It's a place that of needs discontent filling. that really yeah. involves repentance and facing yourself, maybe looking at some ugliness. Yeah. It's like a surgeon looking at cancer. Yes. But you got to get it out of your system. Yes. And then change is, is possible. And not living with um, compromise, because yeah. when, we, when, we, when we know something's wrong, and we have the Holy Spirit saying, nagging us and saying, look, 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 yeah. look, look, and we don't do anything <coughs> about it, and we don't do anything about it, that, that, that's the yeah. dangerous thing. Yeah. So we had a wonderful you know, email mm. from, I forget his name, who was the alcoholic, and who's changed, and who is living for other people now. Is that Santander? You know? Yeah, Santander, yes. that's right. Yes. And we have one from Sue, and it says, hi guys, blessings to you both, and welcome to Friday evening. You feel so welcome. It's Thank so you. great, yes, you know. Yes. My prayer for 2013, I like this, is to have more of God's heart wow. for others, wow, that's which great. I confess I sometimes struggle with. As you said, being made new. Wow. That's the whole heart. This is yes. not religion. Yes. This is saying, God, you know, I can't do this. You know, <laughs> what, what is this lady? I can't name? change Sue. 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 So I think Sue. I think the fact that you are looking at um, having the heart of God. I think everything comes out of having the heart of God. That's where we have the compassion. That's where we have the uh, dunamis, the, the 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 power of God, the excitement of God. I think this is that's, that's yeah. amazing. It's wonderful. Yeah. But notice it goes to the heart, which is God. Yes. Another one we have from Norma D. Do you know? Well, I know you're watching, Norma. Hi. But I remember this name. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Dear Kurt and Melanie, it is good to see you both again. The last time for me was Monday, 9th April, when I was going through a crisis. Oh, wow. That's the level two, the yes, level three. Yes, yes. I learned later from a nurse that you both stopped and prayed, which was at the same time the staff were trying to sort my heart rate. So this is my thank you to you both for following when God prompts. And I remember you signing your name as Norma D. And these are great testimonies. I see tears kind of welling up in your, in your eyes. I always look, you don't like me when I look at you. You know, we see a movie together or something. But well, thank you, Norma, you know. <coughs> it says, um, blessings. This is from Patricia. It says, mm -hmm. blessings, wondering where you both were. 
Okay. <laughs> I was wondering that as well. You know, we haven't been around for, for a long time. Glad to be back, you know. Yeah, but Revelation TV, yeah. I mean, really, to their credit, they have had such a huge thing with the move and the incredible, I mean, the staff and everything. So we, we really were just fitting in. Yeah. That's what we were really doing. And now we have the privilege of being able to be with you uh, every Friday evening. And so yeah. we're, we're very excited. I think Revelation TV has moved from level five to level 56 oh, or something, yes. you know. But blessings, you know, and again, my resolutions are love and help people, you know, by the Holy Spirit more. Hear God's voice clearly. Wonderful. You know? Good. Excellent. Hey, Mel, sorry I can't spell your name. Your hair is fabulous tonight. <laughs> So on the exterior, you changed. You uh, cut your long hair. Well, I, actually, <laughs> yeah. but I'll, I'll, sh I'll share something personal. I, I was actually feeling that I was in a complete rut. <coughs> and I just was not feeling any newness. I wasn't feeling any inspiration. And I went to my daughter's um, friend's mother to have her, my, my hair cut. I thought just a little trim. And then I saw this fabulous picture of this woman. I thought, you know, why not? Everybody's told me I'd look stupid with short hair because I'm so tall and have a small head. I thought, just cut it off, cut it off. And you know, they say a change is as good as a holiday. Well, actually, I feel fabulous because it doesn't take any time to do this. I just, it's done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so thank you. And we have another one, Frank from Somerset. Great video clip. I've been learning the Bible for three years, and I do believe the saying, happy are those conscious of their spiritual need. Yes. You know? Yes. And, and that's true. Mm. When you have a spiritual hunger yes. to change. Yes you know, you want to see that change, yes. you know? That's good. Thank you. Okay. Okay, we, we need to um, move on a little bit, I think, Kurt. Yeah, yeah, I'm we just have, looking for some more. We, yeah, we, I, th I think what we'd like to do is just, we, we have a certain amount of time, and we would really like to uh, invite you, many of you already um, have some wine and some bread in preparation for, for sharing the table and we wanted to continue this i don't know whether we'll do it every week but we wanted to do it this week and uh to invite you to join us so i don't know whether you're going to have time or you already have it in front of you but um kurt we, we want to do this because it's such a profound act and many of you can't get to church and haven't had the opportunity to break bread and to remember this you know jesus said you know do this in remembrance of well, me well really this is all about change what yes. we have this is a new covenant do, remembering what Jesus did for us, he died to make us completely yes. new, yes. you know? And, and and, and sorry, can I just interrupt yeah, you? No, go for it. And yeah. if he said that, then it means it's possible. Yeah. Because some of us are stuck in things going, God, you've just got to break through. And yeah. we almost feel like we've asked him a thousand times and it hasn't happened. Yeah. Yeah. But Jesus died and to do the miraculous and to make things See, new. But, but Jesus in the kingdom of God, he said, if you want a life, you have to lose it. Lose yes. it. Yes. You have to take up your cross and follow me. And, and in those days, if you took up your cross, it was a one-way journey. Yes. You, didn't, you didn't return. No, no. But you know, he died that we might become born again, that we right. might become completely new. And just before we share communion, you know, I, I was reminded of a story. It was Alexander Solzhenitsyn. And he was in what they called the Gulag Archipelago as a concentration camp in Siberia. And he'd, you know, he's a famous writer and he'd been there for many years. And every day was the same, bitterly cold, working 12 hours a day, moving the stone pile from one section to section B and then back doing useless work. And one day he was just so exhausted and so tired. He said, you know, I'm just gonna lie down and I know it's gonna happen. The security guards are gonna beat me to death. Right. Like, you know, I could care less. I'm just tired of life. You know, I've tried to fight the demon of communism all my life. I'm just giving up. I'm going to lie down. I'm going to die here yes, right yes. now. And then just before he lied down, an elderly man came up and he had a stick in his hand and he made the sign of the cross in, in the ground or on the snow. And he saw that. And at that moment, it's just like the spirit of God entered him yes. and he became completely knew on the inside, he knew that the power of the cross could defeat the power of communism, that the power of the cross would give him meaning to go on in life. So really, on the outside, nothing really had changed. Yes, but on the inside, everything had changed. Yes. And how different is this from the world? Yes. 
you know? So what we're doing, and you know, even if... I just invite yeah. you to, to take your bread and uh, mm. just uh, cut. Why don't you take, yeah. you take one piece? I will, thank you. you and uh, this is the body of Jesus Christ broken for you, yeah. that you might have forgiveness of sins and new life. So yeah. we want to take it together and then we want to, to drink. Yeah. Yeah. And then at the end of the program, we want to, we're going to just end up with a, a beautiful song that you'd have some time to meditate on. on it started yeah. already, that you'd have time to meditate and just spend a few minutes just enjoying the presence of the Lord, enjoying just this time. So yeah. may God bless you. May yeah, his God, body strengthen thank us. Thank you for this, you know, yes, that you've Lord. broken your body for us, that you loved us so much, Lord, and you want us to enjoy and experience your newness. Thank you. And no matter where we are, Lord, in life, or on level one, Thank level you, eight, Lord. it doesn't matter, we come to you, and this is what it's all about right now, Lord, Thank remembering you. and applying yes, what you did on the cross for yes. us. Yes. And Lord, we just eat, eat this it? as a symbol, remembering yes. what you did for us on the cross. Thank you, God. Can we take the wine, the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for us, for you, for the forgiveness of sins? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah, you know, we have a few minutes left and we would just like to invite you, ourselves included, to meditate and, and hear God speaking. And He's speaking into the deep places in, in our lives. About permanent change. About permanent and lasting change that we can really become, what Scripture says, a new creation. And our prayer is that the Holy Spirit would speak to all of us, pinpoint the area you know, that we need changing. And our response will be, I can't change. But you can do it. Lord. But you can do it. Yeah. Just like Sue wrote in, you know, she can't do it, but God can do it through you. Yeah. So as we just listen to the words and meditate on this song, yes. you know, let's meditate on what he did for us and so how we can you. really we thank change. Thank you for being and with us and we're going to leave you with this song. Take time yeah. to meditate. Yeah, it's been wonderful to be with you in, in the living room, and uh, we will see you next week.